Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you uh, for joining the Nancy D. Catch Caregiver Show. We're so glad that you're here with us again this week, and we hope that you've had a good week. And it's uh, close to holiday season again. Christmas is coming, New Year's, and I'm sure so many of you are wondering, what am I going to do with mom or dad? I need to get some shopping done. I need to go to the sports games. I need to do a lot of things. But, you know, I met this wonderful uh, company this week and they're located in Clio, Michigan. It's called Christie's Care and Christie uh, is a wonderful, wonderful uh, person with a kind heart and she has a very, very different type of uh, sitting service for individuals who have persons with Alzheimer's and dementia. And it's so unique that uh, I have to tell you about it and I wanted to share this uh, on the air right away. Uh, Christie's uh, program is a 24-hour uh, drop-off center for individuals that have uh, dementia or, or Alzheimer's. And you can give her a call a half an hour before you want to drop your loved one off. So say something happens in the middle of the night and you can't attend something, or something urgent happened, an accident or a baby's being born or something like that, and you, you're kind of stuck because you have somebody that needs to be taken care of. You can take that individual to Christie's uh, facility located a quarter mile south of Vienna Road on Saginaw, and uh, they'll be able to take that loved one immediately and uh, be able to provide food and a, a room for her for them to sleep if they need it. But you need to give them a call. It's 964-2202. And I just wanted to share that new business with you. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, facility for individuals that, that need that help. Um, I want to... Uh, Welcome our guest today, uh, Professor Frank Friedman. Uh, he is an outstanding individual, very uh, well known in the community, uh, and I just happened to meet him uh, recently when I attended a support group at uh, the cancer uh, facility um, just in front of uh, Mott Community College. And uh, I just want to welcome Professor to the show. I'm mm -hmm. so glad that you're here. And, Thank you. And we, we tried to get you on sooner, but we just couldn't mm -hmm. do it. And so yeah. our schedules have finally connected. And uh, our co-host is running a little late. And Dr. Chatfield is really busy with patients. So it's just probably going to be uh, mm -hmm. Professor and I today. But I want to welcome you. And I want to just thank you for the wonderful things that you have been doing for this uh, kidney cancer support group because as you know that's why I started my business because there was no support for mm -hmm. us caregivers mm -hmm. and and this is how uh, you got started too so why don't you tell us a little bit about um, how you uh, got to Flint and and a little bit about your career because some people may uh, maybe recognize your name but may have forgotten mm -hmm. and so you you came to flint to teach at the college mock college yes correct? that's correct mm -hmm. yeah and so you ended up what subjects did you teach i taught french and english and i also directed the language lab for 30 years 30 until years. i retired in 1995. but you didn't retire of course and that's I what i went yeah. to a new career <laughs> yeah new career and you were telling me earlier before we uh, got on the air about these wonderful uh scholarships that you you started right. way back when right. many years ago and some of the innovative things that you did to raise money for individuals that had disabilities right i started when i was still teaching at mott college because our son was uh, developmentally disabled and i've saw a way that we could raise funds uh, which would lead to scholarships uh, for those who want to work with a handicap. And it turned out to be a very, very large undertaking. And for the number of years that I was employed there, uh, we would have uh, a very large book sale. That was one of the easiest ways to raise money. And fortunately, for 20-some years, uh, I was able to raise enough money to give out approximately 125 scholarships of varying uh, denominations. And these were people that were students at Mott that had to meet certain criteria and eventually wound up uh, going either into the teaching profession or something uh, closely associated with, with handicapped. And it worked out very, very well. My own son uh, was born disabled, and uh, that's quite a story in itself. 
but uh, he lived until he was 38 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, he died of kidney cancer. But uh, he was uh, prematurely diagnosed uh, of what they called tuberous sclerosis, which is a genetic disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't affect very many people. But uh, he was able to be educated as much as possible. My wife and I educated with, even though the, unfortunately the local schools tried, but uh, didn't always succeed. So whatever gap there was, we would fill in. And right. he was able to read on third grade level, and uh, he was able to travel with us. We know that uh, young people that have this particular disease, and by the way, it was also on uh, public television this past weekend, uh, Healthy Mind, Healthy, or Healthy Body, Healthy Mind program on uh, Channel 28. They happened to be discussing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it's very rare. I mean, there are a lot of genetic disorders. You have to realize that many diseases that uh, people have today are based on uh, uh, genetics and uh, I keep telling people and they wonder, is this really possible? And the doctors will confirm that of everyone who was born, approximately 80% of the population will have at least one gene that can metastasize any time during one's life. And that's exactly what happened. 20% of the population will never have cancer, believe right. it or not. And of course, it's very unique too because uh, we have situations where uh, cancer comes into a family and there's no history. And then, of course, there are other where there is uh, quite a background of people with cancer. Yeah. I do a lot of work uh, on the Internet. I have a, a group that's called Kidney Cancer Support Group of mm -hmm. Michigan. And uh, I'm always out to get people to sign up. And uh, they can go to Facebook, and I'll, I will welcome them. What makes it very nice is that these people are, are of all ages. And we're talking about children and adults right. that, that have cancer or are in remission. We're also talking about professional people. Right. There could be caregivers. I have doctors. I have lawyers. I have teachers. Right. I have uh, people that run businesses. Um, they're not only from the United States, but from foreign lands at all. Because right. When you surf the, the web, you find this out. Sure, there are other kidney cancer groups, but they're mostly chat. They're nothing like I do. Mine is uh, like a clearinghouse. Yeah. It's, uh, Sure, I will talk about kidney cancer, but I also will mention will. other kinds of cancers that people don't know about. Right. Because unfortunately, the media in our area here limits their discussion. And, yeah, uh, it I shouldn't be a bad word. You yeah. know, it really shouldn't and be a I bad really word. I really want uh, people to, to know more about it. Yeah, and I'm really glad that you uh, came on the show because... Um, Sometimes when you get sick, people treat you like you've done something wrong. Right. You feel like a naughty child, right. and mm -hmm. and it's just something happened in your body, and something seriously has gone wrong. Uh, and I know that how I experienced that shunning from people when my husband was so sick, and uh, people don't understand, and that's part of why we're here. That's what mm -hmm. what the caregiver show is all about is mm -hmm. to to let people know it's not that scary. We're, we're not contagious. No. We're just human beings that have an interruption in our life, mm -hmm. and we need to support one another. And somebody had experienced this before we did, and somebody will experience it after us. And so that's what's really great about your group. You're very enthusiastic, mm -hmm. and um, right now you, you, you're uh, saying that your, your support group is dwindling, and we can't quite figure that out. So we're urging you, if you know somebody that could use a fantastic support group, uh, this cancer support group uh, that's offered at the uh, Institute, it's Genesis, Genesis Institute. Cancer Institute, it is a fabulous group, very energetic, upbeat, it's not depressing, a ton of information, and if Doctor or if uh, Professor uh, Friedman can't get it for you, he will have it for you in a very short time, whatever it is that you're looking for. And um, he's here to help you and to assist you and to help you get through that very difficult time. But there's a lot of research about cancer. And uh, something that we talk about a lot is prevention. And that's something people don't want to know about. You know, a lot of these cancers... Um, can be prevented and we don't know when the body mm -hmm. changes but we do know we need to eat our vegetables and we need mm -hmm. to eat our fruits and we need mm -hmm. to stay away from animal proteins and mm -hmm. things like that the best that we can um, mm -hmm. because a lot of what we take in ends up you know our body turns it, it gets sick because we're eating things that our bodies aren't meant to eat but then 
that's okay, but when you do get sick, you need to have a place to go. And uh, this support group is phenomenal. And uh, there's just so many great things. And what you were saying, I thought this was really fantastic. Tell us a little bit about this, um, the Children's uh, uh, Cancer uh, Support Month. That You said it was for September, yes. and now it's been right. renewed. Right. Uh, I deal also with children, uh, the three principal diseases that children have. Leukemia, of course, is number one. Wilms tumor, which I'm familiar with, is number two. That's kidney cancer. And of course, number three is geoblastoma. Uh, the statistics will vary. Um, in my particular case, Wilms tumor, I kind of fell into it by accident, but uh, there are only like fi 500, maybe a few more than that, throughout the whole United States. And uh, to this very day, they still don't know why children come down with it. We have a case in St. Clair County in the East China School District. There are eight families affected. They think maybe it was from the water of the St. Clair River. Could it be the environment? Could it be from a virus? Uh, could it be somebody else in the family that may have had uh, uh, cancer before? Could it be from, uh, of course, blood and urine? It could come from a virus, not the kind of virus you would think, right. but a virus in your back. Uh, there are just so many factors. And if you want to see exactly more about this, uh, I recommend you go to YouTube. There I created in February 2009 four videos. Uh, and it has turned out today I realized that there are 11,000 people that have looked at my videos in four years, mm -hmm. believe it or not. That's great. And uh, I do discuss Wilms tumor there. Uh, there's a little girl, and I'm in touch with her mother and her grandmother. The little girl is doing fine now. Uh, you must realize, too, that with cancers, whether it's children's cancer uh, or adult cancer, there is uh, a survival rate, uh, particularly today. I mean, everybody thinks of St. Jude, which is a fantastic right. place. I mean, their survival rate is about 80%. Several years ago, it was never that high. Uh, we do have locally, too, at uh, Hurley Hospital, uh, a very fine man who's been there for a number of years, Dr. Susumu Inoue. Uh, Japanese American. He's in charge of all the children uh, that may have leukemia. Uh, we have three children in Genesee County now, believe it or not, ages mm -hmm. 4, 12, and 14 now. And it's about two and a half years, uh, the regimentation. And you never really know, even after they're through with treatment, uh, how long they, they will live. But with the Wilms tumor, there's also a, a website, and the parents and uh, caregivers, if you wish, Nancy, and uh, school personnel. They have done everything possible. They even had the Center for Disease Control come down. They've had the uh, local uh, health department. Uh, Michigan State now, believe it or not, has undertaken a grant now. And if there's any question about a child, whether he is coming down with it or not, they have personnel at Michigan State that will sit down and interview the people to see exactly and give them the help they need. Unfortunately, we did not pass our millage at Hurley Hospital. I yeah. wish we would have. Yeah. But so many people that use it turned it down. Yeah. And otherwise, they didn't we understand. would have a children's center. The right. closest one we now we have, of course, is Ann Arbor, C.S. Mott Children's Center. But we would have had a children's center if the people had realized that by giving them the money, that's fine. They are making wonderful improvements, I must say, at Hurley. I mean, with their uh, right. uh, entrance... Uh, uh, with the emergency room and so forth, but they, they are certainly limited and of course the personnel over a thousand that work at Hurley Hospital could not get involved with with that. But I do want to say with kidney cancer, uh, the statistics I have from the American uh, Cancer Society are pretty much up to date and uh, I would say that uh, of the number of people that are diagnosed, for example, both men and women uh, this year alone, there are approximately 64,770 people who are diagnosed with kidney cancer. And of those, probably 20% will succumb, mm -hmm. believe it or not, mm -hmm. because they may not be able to discover it soon enough. Right. Uh, the statistics are, are, are just alarming. I have them for, for all the states, uh, for all different types of cancer. Breast cancer, of course, that's the one everybody talks about. Right. And I'm in touch with people, even in my kidney cancer uh, Facebook group. I have people that are uh, involved with breast cancer 
this year alone, I can just tell you for breast cancer, approximately 240,000 women right. are going to be diagnosed with breast cancer, right. believe it or not. Right. Now, what's interesting uh, about uh, cancers is that there are several things that are going on. Of course, we've got about 50,000 researchers who are trying to find a solution to cancer. You realize there are over 215 different kinds of cancer, and some cancers haven't even been discovered yet. Right. I mean, right. you find that out from doctors when children come in there and are admitted at St. Jude, for example, and they scratch their head and they can't figure out what, what kind of cancer this child had. But th the important thing is that uh, it's going to be the researchers that are going to come up with, I think, eventually. It's not the medicine. With kidney cancer, we have about seven medicines now. Uh, we have clinical trials for the adults. Right. For children alone, it's very small. You would think that we would have clinical trials for children, uh, but they're not. The other thing that I want to mention, too, is that uh, with the Childhood Cancer uh, Awareness Month coming again in December, mm -hmm. besides September, of all the monies that they have raised, whether we've done uh, Stand Up to Cancer or whether we have the, the hundreds of different kinds of uh, organizations that have fundraising, and believe me, there are a lot more than I, I could even mention, but uh, only about 3% of all the monies that are raised for kidney cancer research go for children. Right. And that's sad because it's we very need sad. actually a lot more. Uh, right now, very important, you haven't seen it in the news here, but I have, because uh, I, like I said, I surf the web. Anderson Cancer Center, which is the biggest one in the country, in Houston, Texas, uh, they are very, very well known. They have thousands of employees there. They are starting a new project, which has the same name of John F. Kennedy had back in 1952, called the Moon Project. 50 years exactly. What they're going to do, they're going to take the most uh, obvious cancers, leukemia, colon, breast, uh, prostate, and with $3 million uh, and growing, I mean, some are from grants and others are, are monies that they have uh, given to them by wealthy people. They hope within the next five years they can come up with a uh, solution to some of the cancers. There's no guarantee, but uh, uh, you remember, too, uh, Robin uh, uh, Roberts, the one that was on Good Morning America? Right, yes. She has this particular kind of cancer. It's a, it's a form of low-grade leukemia, which at one time was deadly. Now, she herself had breast cancer one time. Right. And she, unfortunately, had a sister who gave her a bone uh, marrow transplant, and she's doing very, very well. But we don't, don't know what the future is going to be. Right. But at least we have our uh, wonderful people that are, are involved. Two other things I want to mention, too. Uh, as I said, everything can be genetic. In my case, I had no idea with my son that uh, one gene had metastasized and uh, he'd lived as long as possible, which was 38 years. But there's also what we call VHL, the von Hippel uh, Landau syndrome. Uh, we have a chapter here in Michigan. The lady lives uh, right outside of Flint. About 25,000 people are born with this genetic disease also. Uh, which can affect the brain, the liver, the breast, the ovaries, the legs. And uh, they're doing a marvelous job. They just had an international conference uh, in uh, Boston. And VHL uh, is the, it's called the VHL syndrome. Some of the doctors, one of the famous doctors uh, from Anderson is involved in this. He does clinical trials. And that's, that's a huge area, by the way. I don't want to get into it. Just say this, that... Uh, with most cancers, like kidney cancer and so forth, there are stages. Mm -hmm. And if you have a tumor, you know, right. Right. Uh, stage one, same with breast cancer. Uh, it's preliminary. It's based on the number of centimeters of a cancer. By the time you get to stage four, it, it's very, very serious. Right. And one never really knows if one will be able to live. But fortunately, we have clinical trials at different stages. I wish we had a lot more because they would be able to diagnose the people and help them. In my particular case for kidney cancer, we do have about seven uh, drugs that are being used. Very expensive, thousands of dollars mm -hmm. each month. You could never buy them at the local uh, pharmacy or right. drugstore. They are with uh, this agreement between doctors, oncologists, uh, urological oncologists, and pharmaceutical companies to get the drugs for people. I mean, we're talking things like Aviston, which, by the way, has been used for breast cancer in the Breast cancer survivors are fighting about that because the FDA doesn't like it. They say, no, it's not going to work. And some breast cancer survivors have testified, yes, it helps me. And the American uh, Medical Association is, is supportive. Uh, we have Sutent, which is probably the most common one that's used for, for kidney cancer. But uh, uh, Votrin is the most uh, 
recognizable one it's, it has helped even though you have to be very very careful uh, because of the toxicity there's mm -hmm. always that factor yes. involved. you never mm -hmm. really know whether the body is, is going to be able to have it right. so in my uh, correspondence on on the internet I belong to what's called ACOR A-C-O-R an acronym mm -hmm. which is the Associated Cancer Online Registry which encompasses about 15,000 people and they will write in from all over the world they have a particular condition I have this condition, can you help me? Is this medicine or is this doctor? Should we go here to see this person or that person? It is a very, very tedious job, in particular to have a loved one, you know, just That's to be right. a caretaker. That's right. I've lost some very good friends that were caretakers. Uh, I can imagine what they, they have gone through. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it it's becomes very, a crash course. Yeah, yeah. For any kind of cancer. But the yeah. most interesting thing is there are two websites I want to tell the people yep. about. Uh, and it doesn't have to be for cancer. It could be for cystic fibrosis. It could be for Parkinson. It could be anything. And a lot of people don't know this. It's free of charge. All they have to do is, is sign up. One is called uh, caringbridge.org, O-R-G. They're out of Minnesota. Caring Bridge. I'm in contact, uh, uh, contact with the people. Even if they may have a loved one that passed away, they still keep you updated right. about them. The other one is called carepages.com. They're out of... Uh, Massachusetts but you can sign up free of charge and you can list the person there if you know of somebody that has a disease and you want those people to know it's very important because uh, like I said there are some that have children or, or loved ones even older ones that will will not even tell you about it right. uh, but th I find it as a release mechanism because these are people who have lost children that still stay on the internet and remind people uh, what are they doing many of them sign uh, will organize foundations. I probably have 15 foundations in my Facebook alone. And these are people that started foundation. One lady, for example, is in Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. She was a, a lady from South America, Colombia, who had a perfectly healthy daughter, eight years old, came down with a virus, and three days she was dead. Mm -hmm. Perfect child, nothing yes. wrong. The child was very healthy. She was in all kinds of activities and so forth. What did that woman do? She created a foundation and I've contributed to it. They have so many different organizations. You know how large Miami is. They have fundraisers galore there. But there are so many people that are, uh, don't have the resources. So they use a lot of the money and they help the families that have children right there in the hospitals in Miami and the Fort Lauderdale area. It's very well, the June, uh, I thought it's the June Foundation. I don't remember the exact name, but it's the June. If anybody wants to know, I can give it to them. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, too, is that... Um, Aside from the kidney cancer, that's I'm in touch with, with adults and children. Every day I, I, I surf the web. And like I said, I'd be glad to have you sign up. I have 988 people already, mm -hmm. and I want more. It sounds like I'm uh, stuffy about it. No, I just want more people to know about it. Right. Because it's not a chat room. You can get all the chat rooms you want. But mine is uh, it's multi-cancer facet, but I still keep the name uh, kidney cancer. But I also want to uh, tell you that um, I do belong to the American Cancer Society mm -hmm. and uh, I have worked with a Relay for Life. Uh, they have a publication now, you can find out, it's recent. If you want to know their activities, uh, it's called New Connections. Mm -hmm. It's brand new, it's a uh, bi-monthly newsletter the American Cancer Society puts out. Also I want to mention too that I belong to the American so uh, Action to Cure Kidney Cancer, ACKC.org which is not as large as the Kidney Cancer Association, which I had belonged to at one time. I don't, I don't anymore. They're more uh, oriented towards fundraising. ACKC is now putting out four new guides uh, to help kidney uh, cancer patients, uh, new and, and those that are, are advanced. This is something that's brand new. They operate out of New York. And uh, so we have two basic organizations for kidney cancer. One is the Kidney Cancer Association in Evanston, Illinois, and then this one, which is based in New York, which is probably about mm, 20 years old. Yeah. But uh, still, uh, it does a, a lot of good work. You must realize, people, that you, almost like me, it's just natural for me, because I was in education 35 years. So it's natural for me to disseminate information to people. Right. And uh, I don't mind doing it. I'll go, go uh, out of my way. And uh, some people will contact me and want to know where can I get this help and where right. can I get that help. Our doctors, we do have nephrologists here in, in Flint. 
they're in the Park uh, Plaza on uh, Ballinger. I'm in touch with one of them. Uh, I myself, I'm checked because my son had kidney cancer. I'm checked every year by a urologist uh, down in Ann Arbor to make sure that, that I'm all right. I have a benign tumor on one side, but uh, so far I'm okay. But uh, the important thing, and I want to mention too, that I'm not talking about kidney failure. I'm not talking about chronic kidney disease. That's a different area. Right. I mean, a person can come down with kidney cancer, but I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean he has chronic uh, uh, disease, although the real problem is that many of them are diabetic. They're overweight. Uh, they eat the wrong foods. I've been reading all about so much sodium, sodium bicarbonate, right. Uh, right. the salt. Uh, the uh, government is trying to do it. The states are trying to do it to tell people to ease off on salt. But when you have a diet there and people, and the most difficult thing is to try and convince families today right. I mean, with our lifestyle not to give them all this processed food or take them to all the fast food restaurants because that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. uh, many times children, and we do have a large number of children that are obese, I don't have to tell you that. Adults, that's a different story. I mean, over half the number of adults in the United States are obese, we know that. But the important thing is that these children, if we don't do something with them, they're going to come up with heart disease and kidney problems and other things later in life. Right. And families say, well, what can I do? How do I do it? Well, they've got to start early, and they've got to talk to the children. They've got to find specialists. They've got to read up on it because we have too many families that are suffering, and they feel victimized. Well, they didn't do anything. Right. I mean, we want our children to get plenty of activity, too, outside activity. And that's uh, the problem. And, yeah. we've, you know, we've discussed sure. that so many times, um, uh, Professor, because uh, we... I don't know how many times we've talked about it on the show, you know, and eat more vegetables, eat more fruit, right. you know, get that, you know, the, the animal protein down. But it, it's all the hidden sodium. So you have a hidden sodium on top of table salt. And you do that quite a few times a day, and you end up with the blood pressure and the, the retail, you hold your water, you know, the water retention, and, and it, it really causes problems for your heart. But I do know... Um, I don't know how many of our, our listeners and viewers know that um, I became a caregiver at seven years old when my father, who had no kidneys, um, mm -hmm. needed, uh, needed something to survive. At, in 1960, um, my mother uh, took my father with the th us three little kids to Cleveland Clinic where mm -hmm. my father mm -hmm. ended up on the dialysis mm -hmm. machine. Had no kidneys at the time. People didn't know what it was. You know, it was just a mess that found out Hurley Hospital had a dialysis mm -hmm. machine in the closet on the 11th floor. And my mother worked very hard uh, with the doctors there and the politicians and things like that to change uh, the insurance reform and things like that. Mm -hmm. And she really did a lot uh, for health care as it stands today. A lot of what's mm -hmm. going on now mm -hmm. was a part of my mother's efforts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I can remember Hubert Humphrey coming to our home. Mm -hmm you know, to talk to my mother. Mm -hmm. But my mother always preached mm -hmm. about the sodium. And see, as oh. children, we weren't allowed to have salt yeah. in our potatoes or on our vegetables. And so when I would eat someone else's food, it didn't taste right. And, you know, we weren't allowed to have potato chips or you know, I didn't even know what a Dorito was or pizza until I ended up uh, in ninth grade mm -hmm. with, with our peers. So, you know, I never knew about these other types of food. But my mother preached back then when she started the uh, Kidney Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, it was all about diet. Mm -hmm. And we are not getting anywhere. We're not. We're just causing more and more and more problems because, you know, our economy is a problem. Uh, we have uh, the mothers have been taken out of the home because p it takes two people to work and the children are kind of left to eat something they have to be fed mm -hmm. and so you know we don't know what what the solution is our our whole country uh is in trouble and our children are the ones that are going to suffer and so we're really trying hard and we agree with you mm -hmm. that we need to get more fruits and vegetables into the mouths of these these individuals i know dr our, uh, ronald um here uh, he had I'm this fan. This is yeah. This is <laughs> Robert Rowan, by the way. <laughs> Me, Doug. He's our co-host too. But um, he has this wonderful young lady that he introduced to us. Uh, she's uh, about 14, 15 years old, and she has an interest in becoming a chef for children. 
And so she ended up being um, our little chef at our youth retreat mm -hmm. for wellness. Mm -hmm. And she did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and so we've got some people, some young kids that mm -hmm. have an idea that, you know, something's got to change for my peers. Mm -hmm. And that young lady uh, just happened to come into our life. And, you know, she's doing a fantastic job. But she never stopped there. She, she has created a program. Uh, for diet, exercise, uh, activities, uh, so inspiring. Own, uh, she has her own nonprofit organization. At, uh, it's That's in good. it's in the process of being uh, approved through the Internal Revenue Service currently. So we hope to hear something from them very shortly. Yeah, you know that it you know uh, will be approved, and uh, she has quite a quite a program that she wants to initiate with youngsters. Uh, exercise, mm -hmm. proper diet, mm -hmm. those sorts of things. You probably have seen, Ron uh, and Nancy, too, the schools are trying to take all this uh, food with sodium out of it. And they're even right. trying to get rid of pop and give them milk. Um, New York is, is up in arms, I'm sorry to say. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg has issued an edict. Uh, aside from the large, uh, was it the 10 or 12 ounce containers of pop, which you can still get in the grocery store and some restaurant, they want to ban it because uh, it has a, a detrimental effect on children, particularly yeah. the sodium. So uh, it's not a nationwide thing, uh, yeah. but uh, he's been recognized for that. The other thing I want to mention too is that I've had people ask me that have had cancer, well, what should I eat? Well, I said, doesn't your doctor ever tell you? No, he doesn't tell me that. No. Uh, at, for example, at Genesis, when I uh, was in touch with them recently, they have as many as six different nutritionists or dietitians because those that have had cancer, each one has a separate diet. It's not going to be the same. Sure, fruits right. and vegetables, right. uh, certain liquids, uh, they have to watch their intake. Right. And that is one of the most difficult things there is. Uh, right. uh, I've never had a program. Well, I did too. I'm sorry. I did have a program on nutrition, and the person came down and... Uh, the American Association of Dietitians, I believe, it's, is the organization now that if people want to really find out uh, about diets, or they can go online too. Right. I mean, just write in the word uh, under Google, uh, diet, cancer diet. You'd be amazed. They even have recipes. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, you can't believe there are hundreds of recipes, just like there are recipes for diabetes. Right. There are recipes for, for cancer. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention too is that uh, March is Kidney Cancer Health and Awareness Month. Right. It is not uniform throughout the country. Uh, for six years in a row, when Jennifer Granholm was governor, I had to go to her for four years. Two years now with our current governor uh, to get a proclamation like this. I have it right here. Yeah. And I distribute it to doctors, pharmacies, and so forth, just so people can know about it. Uh, in 2010, the representatives from uh, the ACKC, they go to Washington, they met with the legislators. Oh, sure, uh, that is McComber, who was with Livonia, but he lost out because they had cheaters uh, trying to get him reelected. Right. So he's out after 26 years. But Steve Israel, they introduced legislation, 2010, with the idea that it would become uniform throughout the country the Kidney Cancer Health uh, and Awareness Month would be recognized. To this state, it has not. So each one of us, if we want to get involved, we have to beg our governor or our uh, state representative to do something. Right. And uh, fortunately, I've had to do that for six years. I get a little tired of it because... Uh, well, you're going to have your political. chance again because... I'm going to have a chance again because that's it's right, up again. That's seven right. Years, seven years in a row. In May, on May 17th and 18th, we are hosting um, the very first Caregiver Respite Retreat and Convention where uh, we are going to have the state representatives sit at a round table and we caregivers are going to be asking the tough questions and that is going to be one of the questions Questions. We that's will ask terrific. them, and you know that this is what it takes. We, you know, we we talked about the elections before, and we uh, expressed our uh, thoughts that people need to get out and vote and make a difference. And here we are again. Now we're post election, and there are still things on the table that are undone. And so we need to remember that we do have a voice. We can make the changes, but it takes a group. It just it takes one leader. 
And you get behind that great leader and many, many things can change. And so we ask you to come in, uh, to this kidney support group and listen to some of the most upbeat information you will ever receive. It's really a great group and uh, you need to be there. But it's not necessarily always for people that have the cancer. There's, uh, I, I didn't, I've never had cancer, but I was attracted to it. Uh, I see it in the paper every week and I said, I have got to go to this meeting. And uh, I ended up going and met some fantastic people. And uh, this is what it's all about. It takes you, you take that time to get to one of those meetings and you will learn a lot. And from there, your journey will begin and you will learn all the information uh, that you need and, and then more. And maybe something will spark in you, but you might be able to, to start something that is special in your heart and become that leader for that need. I might tell you too, Nancy, that I have the meetings already set for next year. Yes. You don't know what I go through just to, to get people, but I mean, they, uh, they give up their time. Just to tell you, we'll start again in March, and uh, one of the very large laboratories in the country, Prometheus, that deals with celiac disease, uh, the gentleman from there, the representative, one of them is a nurse also, believe it or not, and a businessman, uh, he's going to bring a doctor and a kidney cancer survivor. We did have, I will tell you very quickly, we did have uh, cancer awareness, a uh, patient awareness in May. They have it periodically at Genesis Hurley Cancer Institute. We brought the gal from Ohio, very well known, and she was uh, one of the key speakers, along with a gentleman who uh, through uh, his own, not the whole dialysis, but through uh, uh, nu nutrition himself, uh, he... Uh, cured himself. So we have had, we had another gentleman whose wife came, he and his wife came from Columbus, Ohio. We had him last year and he was dying. The doctor at Ohio State couldn't figure out what was the matter. The, the mother went in and told him, now you look, this is what you're supposed to find. Right. And they did and they saved his life. It took his wife to tell the doctor what to do right. to save him. He wrote a book about it. I have it, Vinny. And if you want to know the books, uh, I'll tell you about it. I just want to do a couple things. Um, Normally, kidney cancer affects men over age 55, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> You're young anyway. Uh, more young people are being diagnosed. No, okay. It is the eighth most common cause of cancer for women. Eighth. That's pretty large. It's the sixth most common cancer and the tenth most common cause of cancer death among men. Isn't that something? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we do have three doctors who are coming down on our program next year. One is from Carmanos Cancer Institute, which is very large. Mm -hmm. They have hundreds of people on clinical trials there. So my dear friend is coming back for the third time, Dr. Elizabeth Heath, that's in April. In May, uh, a brand new urologist will find out about my group, so he sounds up. Uh, Dr. Tom uh, Morgan is a urologist is coming. And then in June, we have Nancy who's gonna give a program. September, I have my friend, Dr. Baham Bahani. I can't even pronounce it, let alone spell it. <laughs> uh, she's uh, connected with Wayne University and Carmano. She uh, will come back. She also treats children uh, when necessary at Detroit Children's Hospital, which is fantastic. They just got a big uh, improvement there. Perhaps mm -hmm. you, you saw it or read about it. They had a huge, huge construction problem there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of wonderful people there. October will be my friend, Dr. Stu Weiner, mm -hmm. who was uh, on the staff. Uh, at uh, Genesis Hurley, and now he's in charge of the uh, uh, place out on M15 in Genesis for hospice. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Stu Weiner, he's very well known. And then, believe it or not, I got somebody that I never thought I would, thanks to my friend uh, over in the St. Clair area. She is from a foreign country, but she's connected with Henry Ford. She is a radiation oncologist. She oh, says, yes. I don't care. I'm going to come and talk to your group. I don't care how many of my staff I'm going to leave them. She only has three offices. And by the way, uh, you may not have heard that Beaumont Hospital now is aligned with Henry Ford. They have unified into one large hospital. Oh, okay. They're working. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yes. When you think about all the talent between the two hospitals. Oh, that's fantastic. Kind of, they're working out the details now because uh, it's so important. Uh, it hasn't been written up yet, but it is official. And they... Uh, they're going to start as soon as they, they possibly can. But I do encourage people to contact me through my Facebook, uh, Kidney Cancer Support Group of Michigan. Right. Uh, 
I'm always interested in, in meeting more and more new people. And I know you have a large audience, Nancy. I hope we can pick up a few of them from, yeah. from the area. But uh, I'm like a resource person, you know, and I enjoy doing it. If mm -hmm. I can reach out and help yeah. somebody, uh, I, will, I will walk that extra mile. Uh, I'm just not one that's going to sit back uh, and let people manipulate me. I might be manipulating other people. Sometimes I might step on their feet and they say, you're too aggressive. Well, I like to get things done. But I am, believe me, I just wish I would live long enough to see that we would have a cure for cancer. Yeah. It is so important now. Yes. And uh, one doesn't really know. Dr. Heath from Carmona says we're close. My other friends who are doctors from Ann Arbor says we're not close. So, I mean, it's the person that you talk with and, and their background. We've got 29 urologists alone in Ann Arbor. Can you imagine? Many of them connected with the kidney problem. And uh, that's a lot of urologists. So, I mean, more and more people are coming down with illness. But the number one thing you must realize that even though this may be uh, Lung Cancer Awareness Month, that smoking, and there's programs galore now, we just had a smoke out. Uh, they're starting a new program on Thursday through the government now to try and get people not to smoke. Uh, it's going to be publicized, I hope, more and more on TV. But uh, the important thing is that even if you smoke, it's going to affect your kidneys. It's going to yep. affect your prostate. It's going to affect... Uh, your, over, your heart, your liver. A lot of people don't realize it. They think just because it's smoking. And we have three different kinds of levels for smoking. You know that? We have the number one, of course. And number two, of course, is we are uh, exposed to secondhand Second smoke, right. you know. Right. And, and then we also have a third one now. All the residue that accumulates from the nicotine and the tars that gets on the carpet, on the on the uh, chairs and whatever, the environment. people are smoking, they don't realize mm -hmm. that. And kids play and they pick that up. Yes. It hasn't been played up very well, yeah. but it, it will be. And it's, I'm sorry to say it's a real problem. The number of people that are smoking now is less. We know that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still, we've got to reach more teenagers. If it isn't drugs, it's, it's uh, smoking. And uh, they're the hardest group to contend with. I've written about it. And... Uh, uh, I enjoy it because uh, I reach out and there's so much information that our local TV and radio stations and newspapers, they don't put it in right. because they think it's not important. But it is important to me and I want people to know about it. Yeah, yeah. and it's important to me too. And, yeah, but I enjoy you know, it. And it's all about awareness, and that's what awareness. that's what's really great. This month of November is just about over, and you know it's uh, the cancer month, it's a veterans month, it's a caregiver month, and that's what that's we're right. all about. And it's just about over for another year. And yeah, you know, I have a regret because last year was the year of the family caregiver, and I did my hardest to and my best to try and get the information out, and and um, I I did all right because I tried, you know. Mm -hmm. But sure. but this year I did so much better but you know there's so much to do and there's so much information out there but again you know try to prepare your own self to be conscientious of what you put in your mouth and conscientious of of what your environment is like a uh, professor says you know the smoke and things like that and i know this because my mother you know raised us to to understand these sorts of things but it's really really an easy thing to do. Um, I know money's tight for a lot of people, and I know that we have poverty issues. That's another big uh, thing going on right now is that uh, poverty and hunger amongst the elderly is escalating. And, uh, you know, it's just so sad to see that because these individuals, they they can't help, they can't go work, They you know, they're limited. And so it takes us. So if you're making that extra meal, make sure that you... Um, take a couple uh, bowls or dishes over to that elderly neighbor, and that person would truly appreciate it. There's nothing wrong with being um, neighborly and uh, kind to people, uh, but, but just don't assume that these people are being taken care of. Make sure that you reach out to those that are in need. And if there are uh, children in the home in your neighborhood that have a disability, also be conscientious of those people. And I think a lot of what I do is um, I try to point out 
some of the things that and that are overlooked simple little things like mm-hmm. opening the door for somebody mm-hmm. that's using a walker i mean you think mm-hmm. it was a common sense but mm-hmm. people won't do it they look at somebody that's in a walker or a wheelchair and immediately they think liability mm-hmm. and you know it's not that it's so hard mm-hmm. but you know i don't know what's happened to our society you know, I just it's don't changing. understand it. And it just seems like food's abusive and, you know, it just it's just really weird. And yet we have all these other problems with anorexia and bulimia because these individuals think that food is a curse. And, you know, it's, we've got to get some control. And the way we can do that is the information, good information that will help us on a day-to-day basis. Another thing, too, besides uh, getting the proper food, um, fruits, vegetables, whatever, is that we need to tell families to get those children to exercise, or even mm-hmm. adults. They yes. do not get enough exercise. Mm-hmm. Even for yeah. adults, 20 minutes a day, five times a week would help. Uh, you can't believe, uh, even with the schools now, and they're, they're so strapped for funds, right. what are the things they cut off? Physical ed. That's right. right. They cut off music. They cut off art or yeah. foreign language or whatever. Mm-hmm. But these kids need an outlet. That's right. They need, children need to exercise. It's part of the body, and it makes them feel better. Yeah, yeah it really does. It, it truly does. And this is a great time of year to exercise. It's just a little cool out, mm-hmm. and so you can work up a sweat, and you're breathing that nice, clean air, right. and, uh, you know, you feel a lot better. It opens up those lungs and, and things. But, you know, talking about schools, I thought this was really interesting. I was a, a fine arts teacher, and... Um, mm-hmm. I, I loved it, and I always thought the kids, they could be creative with anything that mm-hmm. they did. And I always told them, you have to sign your name, you know, because everybody's an artist. <laughs> but um, they used to, you know, love that. But, and you think about it, um, it's almost getting to a point uh, with, with all ages in, in school level that it's a pay-to-play kind of program now. If you're a family... And you can afford uh, the basketball shoes and the uniforms and the letterman's jackets and, you know, the socks or just the fees for uh, the Saturday uh, youth program. You know, that that child's pretty darn lucky. But there are so many kids that can't participate and would love to be a part of that team. And that goes right along with what you said about the schools. They cut that um, physical exercise out or that dodgeball or the volleyball. You know, we were taught all that. Uh, we had a half an hour a week, but at least we had it. But even now the schools are hurting so bad they can't even afford that or art or music and it is really becoming a problem. And uh, so much of our young talent is um, being destroyed because it takes money, you know, to perfect that. Well, you know, to nurture them. That's right. right. To, to nurture right. them the children while they're young. Yeah. From the time that they're, they're born, we have to. Yeah, and, yes. and so, you know, and, and it goes back to that comfort food. I say that all the time. Yeah. What happens if your needs aren't met? Mm-hmm. Generally, they turn to food. That bag of Doritos, or you know, the right. the little now they have some Doritos ten tacos for a dollar, <laughs> exactly. Hot. And uh, the uh, p- uh, nutritionists and so forth are telling people don't buy it because it's going to hurt the digestive system. Uh, yeah, it's been advertised. Yeah. One other thing I just wanted to mention too with children uh, that I'm in contact with, uh, there's been the push, of course, with autism. And I've oh, written yes. about it many times. Yes. Uh, the one thing you may want may not even know is that uh, up to a few years ago, nobody even cared about a child with a disability. And then if he was diagnosed, it wasn't until he got into uh, elementary school, maybe at the age of five. Now they are diagnosed months after they are born. We've got 15,000 children in Michigan alone That's that right. are autistic. I believe we have also a center over on uh, uh, in Burton. Yes, that's uh, right. Yeah, in yeah. uh, Amy I mean, Dalio. Something. Amy Dalio. And of Dalio. course, there are different different kinds of right. uh, Asperger's syndrome. My wife's uh, uh, niece's son. He's grown up now and goes to UCLA, where they have a program for autistic college students. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not. Yeah. But uh, Asperger's syndrome is one of the. I think there are four different types of autism, but it's amazing uh, uh, what is being done. And. Uh, yeah, and Amy, Amy Dalio is in Anything charge of for that. the child. I yeah, mean, we've and got she's got to reach out because our, our children, they're so precious to us. Yes. And uh, they're going to learn all these things early in life. Right. And uh, uh, I'm happy with what the government is doing. Uh, as you know, with Alzheimer's, President 
uh, Obama told Congress, I want $50 million for Alzheimer's. That's fine. But what about the heart or cancer? I wrote letters. I got a letter back from the National Institute of Health uh, all about cancer and from the American Heart Association. Programs are being done. I mean, just because our president is not recognizing it, uh, that doesn't mean that they are they're dead. The programs are there. But to, for example, NIH subsidizes all our hospitals. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. And yet they still ask us for money because there's so many people that are poor that can't pay That's right. and they're in a hospital. They get subsidies from the National Institute of Health. Yes. That's amazing. It is a crisis. And, you know... Um, you know, another thing I want to just mention, yeah. too, with the children's group, uh, I, I don't know if I just said it or not, Cure Search is one of the biggest in the country. Cure, we, Cure Search. C U R E. C U R E S E A R C H. They have a big walk. They raised a hundred thousand dollars here alone. They had a walk in September. They have them all over the country, uh, down at uh, the Plaza in Detroit. Uh, they found out that some of that money is actually channeled to some of our hospitals in the area here. The only problem is now they have broken away. They were aligned with uh, can uh, Cancer Oncology Group, COG. It was called when they were with them. And uh, they had a budget of $60 million. It's now been downsized to $8 million. But their walk is still going to continue because uh, COG wants to do other things, and so does Cure Search. But Cure Search is one of the big ones. The I big mean, ones. aside from St. Jude and uh, St. Baldrick, uh, there are just so many. And, of course, Make-A-Wish. Did you make realize with Make-A-Wish that every 38 seconds a wish is granted across the country? Yeah, 200 and some thousand children have already been taken in. Right. Uh, have been helped by right. Make a Wish. Make a Isn't wish. that amazing? I, mean, these are just, I, I mentioned some of them in my in my commentary, but if you want to know more about it, uh, I'll be glad to share the information. Yeah, and, and like that's I said, I'm a I'm a, a house of information because I want the information to get out there. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've always been that way, mm -hmm. right. and I feel our community, anybody, needs to be informed. Right. right. And we can't depend upon the TV, uh, the newspaper. Uh, even the computer, to tell us. Right. We have yeah. to do our own bit of research. Yeah, and that's true. We are our own cure, really, in a lot of ways. And there's so much knowledge out there. We have the computer. There is no reason in the world why we should be suffering and we should be, uh, you know, in, in poor health like that. And we have about seven minutes left in the show. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I just want to mention uh, a little bit about this uh, convention that we're hosting mm. on May 17th. Um, we have uh, spaces for 320 vendors. If you are someone out there that would like to participate with this caregiver convention, we want to know who you are. You can contact me at 810-845-6713 or shoot me an email at nancy at ndcaregiver and we'll have the information for you. The convention website is up and uh, you can um, ask your questions and uh, December 1st is our date that we're shooting for where the vendor packets will be available but we need your participation uh, we're going to a lot of um, uh, trouble it's not really trouble it's excitement to bring this wonderful uh, product to uh, the state of Michigan we started out local then we went mid Michigan and now we are statewide and this has all been within uh, two months of planning and we're very very excited about it. we have some very very uh, wonderful sponsors mm -hmm. and uh, it's all about caregiving this is an opportunity for any caregiver whether you are a seasoned caregiver whether you uh, are going to be a caregiver in the future perhaps your parents are healthy now but mm -hmm. You know, everybody gets old, and uh, you know it's good. It's good information for everybody. Uh, we have a group of volunteers that are organizing a wonderful event for the respite side of it. They are. Uh, going to be putting on a 50-60 sock hop for all of us with a band <laughs> and an Elvis look-alike contest. And I think the, the volunteers are also going to have a area at the convention where if you want to wear a poodle skirt, they're going to have one cut out and you can decorate your own poodle. And so it's just going to be an absolute riot. And they may even have these clip-on ponytails for us, you know. <laughs> But it's just going to be so much fun, and there's so much energy and excitement because people 
they really want to do something nice for their caregivers, but we want information there. That's what it's all about. Good information, very much like the cancer support group and the autism and the Lions Club, the Rotaries and some other types of businesses. We are uh, there to get this information out to you. We have a wonderful uh, veterans group that'll be there. And we have a team of attorneys. We have a Medicare specialist. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. But we have 320 spaces to fill. And in order for us to offer respite scholarships, we need your help. So if you would like to participate in this wonderful event, please give me a call, 810-845-6713. And uh, we want to make sure that whatever you can offer uh, will be available for us caregivers. And I have a feeling that this is going to be a world-class event is what I'm being told myself, and uh, it's going to be great. And if all goes well, I will have my book available, uh, and it will be unveiled at that time, and you will be able to... Uh, get an understanding of really why I do what I do and the wonderful life that I've been given uh, in spite of some of the sad things that I've lived. But I've turned out okay, and I'm very, very grateful to God for allowing that to happen. And I have no regrets. I have no regrets. Just like you, I, I am living to get the information out to the individuals because I have it to offer, just mm -hmm. like you. it's I don't get anything for it. I don't get paid, you know, and I just think my my reward are, are the pennies I'm going to receive in heaven uh, for the things that we're doing to get this information out to you for the people that perhaps don't have the time to do the research because they're tied down with their responsibilities as caregivers. And that's why so many people that lead these wonderful support groups are there to help you. But you need to get them uh, that encouragement too by attending these meetings um, the best that you can and bring your friends but you know if you have any questions for myself or our professor you definitely can get in touch with either one of us so yeah, Bruce, I just wanted to briefly state that I did publish some articles uh, many of them are on mlive.com uh, I have an article on uh, childhood cancer awareness uh, I also have a, uh, an article that was reprinted from the Grand Blank View about my uh, background, my group, and right. what I've been doing. Right. Uh, if any of you, and I was recently honored, I wasn't surprised, by my friend who was a blogger in California. And uh, she's on WordPress. Right. She wrote a nice thing about me. Right. Uh, so uh, this stuff is there. And uh, I... Uh, Oh yes, there's, are you aware also, either one of you, that there is a radio station in Chicago called Cancer Free? It's the only radio station in the whole country no. that there are people there, they interview or they contact. They contacted me, I don't know where they got my name, but they did a in profile Chicago. on me and they know who I am. Cancer free. It's also great. Uh, online, you can find out about them. Well, I think that's uh, great. And Marvel. That's great. Yeah, it's another, internet, you said, an internet TV show or uh, radio show? I haven't show? been interviewing okay. They just got my background. They know okay. who I am. It's like a profile, you know. So if anybody wants to, they can contact me. The other one that's coming up is on, it's Hope for Lymphoma. Uh, okay. Look at that website because they deal with leukemia and lymphoma. Uh, eventually, they're going to do a profile on me. I don't know just when, but that's uh, in, in the planning stage. Uh, I think so, that's you know, If I can reach out, I'm very, very happy. I, yeah, God, God gave me the, the ability to do what I do, and I'm, I'm very grateful. Yeah. I hope I can continue to do it. Yeah, I know. I, I knew that you had lost your son, but I didn't know that he had disabilities, and uh, that I was something you shared today. disabled, but yeah. we still work from there. Yeah. And that's what parents have to do. They have to assess the... Uh, the strengths and the weaknesses of a child and then work from there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the schools can't do it all. Sometimes you have to do it all on the outside. We know that. Right, and, uh, right. It worked and all right. 30, yeah. 38 years with my son. That was a long time. He yeah. gave up a lot in the process, but it was worth it. Oh, yes, absolutely. I know. There's always a blessing on the other side. And I think, what do we have, John? About two minutes? One minute left. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our show. In fact, Dr. Chatfield has been so busy with his clients that mm -hmm. we have missed him and people have... Uh, 
told us about that, but we have asked Professor Friedman to fill in for him on Tuesdays, and we're hoping he will accept. Uh, and uh, he brings a, a lot of information that uh, we can use, and uh, we would love for him to join us on a weekly basis, and um, we just hope that uh, things will work out where he'll be able to do that. But I am Nancy DeCatch, and I'm so glad that all of you have shared your hour with us today. And next week, we are going to have Christy Johnson and her son Michael on the show, and she is the founder of Christy Cares, a 24-hour adult drop-in care center for you, the caregiver, to assist you when you need to go to do a shopping trip or you know go to a wedding or go to a sports game. You can drop your loved one off at Christie's and she'll take really good care of your loved one and assist you so your life can be a little easier. Until next time, you have a really great week and I, um, I know that you will join us next week and we will see you then. You have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you.